welcome to the channel. Um, got uh, got a nice uh, nice amplifier in for restoration. This is a Selma treble and bass 50, Selma True Voice treble and bass 50, uh, early mid 60s. It's in for a full recap. Um, uh, it belongs to a friend of mine, close friend. He's got the case which is uh, tarting up. Um, so we're just going to have a, a bit of a look at this before we start delving into it. Um, so if we look, let's look at the front panel first of all. You can see we've just got, well, it's a very simple amp this one, volume treble and bass on there. Let me just see if we can hone in there and that and then if we go across we've got a, a nor that's the normal channel and then we've got volume treble and bass and that says bass channel but i think they're very similar there so we've got these these electrolytics on the top here um which i'm never keen on seeing um live wires just behind the uh, live terminals just behind the valves people come in to change the valves um, quite easy to touch those and if those caps aren't discharged even if they've got it switched off it can get a nasty shock so these just these are just on clips so we have to unclip those but all three of those need changing they are let's have a hone in and see if we can see see what they are I think the 32 to 32s I think Yes, they are. Can't see any dates on them. To give us a clue just how old this amp is. But we know roughly how old it is. So those, that's the caps there. Now the, if I'm just going to swing this round. You can see the tubes now. So we've, we've got a 5AR4 um, for the rectification there. And these are soft tech. And we've got a couple of Marshall. Um, EL34s in there um, protruding under this shielding and then we've got four four output tubes um, and they're all 12x7s so or ECC83s under there just lift one out have a look that's a some kind of nondescript tube in there, I'll just leave it there for a minute. Just open another one up. Have a look at him. Yellow print mullards on that one. Um, I'm going to take, the, take these out anyway while I'm working on it. Uh, yellow print mullard on there again. And if we hone this one, um, that is also yellow print mullard. So yeah, mullard. Apart from that one, which we're not sure what that is. So, good uh, good set of tubes in this. They'll do fine. So that's good. Let's have a look on the back. There. This amplifier, oh, look at that, that's interesting. This amplifier has an undistorted output of, and that's blanked off, so we'd assume that to be 50 watts. Setting on the volume control to obtain the power will depend on the input signal level. On a weak signal, the setting will be higher than for a strong signal. If distortion occurs, reduce the volume settings accordingly. So, a bit different than those days. Now, what we need is distortion. Selma of London. There we go. And you can see a very crude... Um, and not very, not the safest of things. Very crude voltage selector there, but it does the job. So let's have a look underneath the chassis. Now I've already done a bit of testing at some of these caps, and we've decided we're going to recap this amp, this amplifier completely. So if we just hone across. quite a few leaky caps that we've tested so we're just going to recap it all 
you see there. If we look over here, we hone in, we can see that at some time it looks like either something's been spilt in here or something's let go. That does look like electrolyte all over the cables. If we look, we can see it under here on the. Um, if we just try and get the camera up there, here you can see it all up on the the sides of the chassis there on the insides. So not quite sure what that is, um, but yeah, we just hone in on that wire there. You can see that's coated. So something has let go in here. Um, that capacitor there has probably been changed, but that's the bias. That's for the negative bias. I can't see that uh, one of those exploding like that. But not sure on that one. Not sure. But yes, that does look a bit. Uh, but not to worry. Um, and let's have a look at some of the uh, the items that we're going to use. So. We've got sozos there if we hone in yeah so we've got those for the coupling caps and whatnot and we have also fishing around in this box we've got an empty packet we don't want that and we've got sorry just move that back down and we've also got three of these which are f and t's 32 32s and there is also some Sprague um, um, cathode bypass capacitors coming at me words out today um, yeah cathode bypass capacitors they're Sprague's so we've got all the top stuff for this so uh, so I've took these three can capacitors out and I've been around with a small uh, wire brush in the drill just cleaned out some of the gunge that was there that, like a, a loose dust that stuck to it um, and I'm just looking at I've clipped this one in so you can see where the, the, the clip holes are for that and um, you've got we've got two of them mounted for got, uh, one clip mounted forward and the two clips mounted back very strange now these capacitors are quite long these ones are quite stubby so we're going to be have to be a bit careful. You, you see, if we try to level those up there, you can see that um, we're not going to be able to get the clip on. So we're going to have to move that forward. And we are going to have to move the other one back. And I could move this one forward to try and level them up, but then I'm going to end up with a clip right on the back. Uh, so I don't really want to do that either. So we're going to have to do a bit of... And the, the ground, it's got like a mini ground bus on. Um, you can see that's part of that is on there and obviously that would just straight across before plain and simple but now we're going to have to improvise a bit with that ground bus to get all those wired up correctly the other annoying thing about these about the way these are mounted if we look at this if we look at this uh, can the terminals on this can you can see that the negative probably just about see negative is on the bottom the, of those three pins and obviously when we mount these on the chassis as I have done this one the negative pin has got to be um, close to the chassis if we turn these round and, and the, we'll end up with the positive pins close to the chassis and we don't want that uh, the problem is when you turn them round like that they're on the blank side so you, you can't see the actual values of the capacitors and the voltage working and so on that's written on there which is annoying um, the next guy that comes in here will be looking at those and wondering what they are don't normally do that um, face caps down so you can't see the values but unfortunately with this from a safety aspect we're not going to we've got no choice we're going to have to do that so before you start putting things in the comments you mounted those back to front you can't see the writing that's the reason we're doing it because it's too dangerous to have the lives too close to the chassis Right, making a start of fitting these caps, um, found a bit of an issue. Because these are now offset, because they're obviously shorter than these were, um, I've got rid of that ground wire, that ground bus, sorry, that, that it had on there. Um, and I've uh, just used this, 
I've burred off that the cut either side of the stand and I've slit across it, put it, pitted it on. Now these pins, and I'm just going to zoom in on these pins. So I've used 18 uh, AWG for these um, for this grinding. So I've just had to prise these pins apart slightly, fit the wire in, and then squeeze them, and then solder them, which is what we've done on that one. Now we had, if you remember, we had like a braided ground coming through there, um, and I uh, I've changed all that because it weren't particularly safe. I'm just going to show you, but I'm just going to turn it over. So here's the braid that came through, and look where it's been tacked onto. Just onto that where they've, they've just bolted it on. Look, we just zoom in so we can just get in in there. And you can see they have just fastened that onto the little bolt on that uh, valve seat there. And uh, the other thing is, if I put the pliers in here, um, just move those wires there, I could move that as easy as anything. Just like that, as you can just, I don't know, you can see those wires up just obscuring but I can turn that as loose as anything so what I've done because I can't leave that like that and this is always the dilemma when you're working on vintage amps you don't want to be drilling any holes in the chassis earth comes up through there you can just see that if we're just honing it's coming up through that grommet and what I've done is I've took it all the way along along there you can just see that just move that you can follow that wire all the way to there to there and you can see it there what I've done is I've used the uh, one of the bolts on the transformer um, much stronger connection made a proper earth lug and fitted it on there um, now that's not ideal either from a uh, from a sense of you know you you need to have a separate hole, separate ground lug altogether, but you're certainly better than that. I am not drilling holes in this amplifier chassis. I'm just not. So better it be on that and secure than on that. Right, we've got these um, caps installed. Um, I can't say I'm particularly impressed with the with the way that uh, this has been designed. Um, not uh, the safest thing they're going on there so next job is to tip it upside down and uh, start replacing uh, all the coupling caps and bypass caps and stuff so as we're getting on to that next right this Selma uh, treble and bass true voice mark one um, now we've got the caps in on the board I'll just show you what I've done on on this one so if we hone in I've got Sprague um cathode bypass capacitors there if we move along um we've got the sozos in for the coupling caps in there um we've got um more sozos there coupling caps and so on along there um change the 220k um the grid leaks have been changed. They were way out of tolerance. One were nearly 300k. This should be 220. And we've put a new capacitor in on the bias. And we've also put a new diode in there. You can just hone in and see him there. New diode there. So we've got him in there. He's a result. So we've tidied up a few bits and bobs as well. Um, I've had this plate off. You can see it's screwed in there. So we've had this plate off and we um, screwed in at either end. We've had that off and cleaned all the pots. So that's done and the sockets and everything. So we're ready to fire this up. So I've just put a little bit out. The tubes aren't in, only the rectifier tube. Otherwise we're not getting any voltage through. So I just put the rectifier tube in and I have a run it up with a low voltage on it. Just enough to get that tube to conduct. And just checked all the voltages and everything looks right and there's no excessive current draw so now I'm going to put the tubes in and we're going to fire it up and see if it runs 
Right, I'm going to fire this up. We've got the tubes in it. Um, before I um, before I put the tubes in, I've just I've done a, a measurement of the windings on the output transformer for the bias, and um, on the uh, left tube, you can let me just hone round. There we go. On the left tube, we've got 97.4 ohms and 79.6 on the right tube a little bit of difference between those so we're going to fire it up and uh, see if it runs right we're going to make a start firing it up I've just put 50 volts on the variac and we're going to have a look I'm just going to set this meter up here you might not be able to see it on there I don't think you can now and if I sound a bit distant sometime, I've um, misplaced my lapel mic for this camera, so that's a car going by. Um, I might sound a bit distant if I get a bit, bit far away from the camera. Let's uh, just fire it up some more. Seventy-two volts now, and got ninety-two milliamps on the current meter, so that's okay. Eleven point three two volt volts on the bias at the minute. Just going up steady because of these new caps and making sure we've not made any mistakes. Just got hundred milliamps on there now. Let's see if it's drawing down yet. So I've got 194 volts on the plate, and that's that is going up slightly now, which I would imagine this uh, rectifier tube is conducting more, so it's knocking out a bit more volts. And I think we've got sound because I can hear something. 186 on the on the uh, phase inverter. Yeah, definitely, we've got sound. Conducting 186, 174. We've got on the other side of that 174. Um, so I'm trying to keep my arm out of the way while I'm filming. But yes, we appear to have sound. Let's see. I've only got 91 volts on the uh, Variac. But, uh, we're drawing. To 100 milliamps. So let's just go up to 120 volts. So we've got 252 on the HD. Oh, we can hear that coming up a tree. Oh, yes. Even at 120 volts, that's running, that's quiet. And it should be with the new caps. 17 volts on the bias so we're roughly at half voltage and we've got half bias so that's looking reasonable hmm can I hear a slight background hum let's just ninety milliamps 140 volts now Ooh. strange goings on there looks like I've got a ground missing or something
difficult because we've got no screen. It's not they're not being in its in its uh, chassis, but in its box. Twenty volts and climbing on the bias. Oh, and that's got some hum. I've got the vol Is that the volumes I'm turning down? Got a bit of hum there. Sounds like a that sounds like capacitance hum as well. So the volumes are down. Hmm, that's noisy. We shall have to investigate that. But in the meantime. 281 now we've got on the uh, plates that's peeding away now that uh, background home Not completely, but that suddenly uh, dropped. 207 and 203 on each side of the phase invert uh, plates. That's one of the, sorry about that, it's one of the 161 on that uh, plate. 197 on that one. Yeah, 203. So that's all looking good. We're at 140 volts. Keep doing that. Oh, we've got a problem. We have a problem. So we shall shut down because of that. And do some investigating right so we've got a bit of an issue there and if I touch that board there so I've got 100 I've only got 120 volts on the variac at the minute so half of what I should have if we look at the meter look at the bias beginning to drop and then when I when I release the pressure off the board it begins to crawl back up so I've got some issue there um, so as the solder dripped through the eyelet and is all is touching the board or almost touching the board And then when you apply the lightest of pressure Down goes the bias what I've done here. I've just took the nut off the board there To see if I can peek underneath because I had just a, I could just see a nut so one of the nuts um that's holding the transformer. Um, I think the output transformer. I think that'll be. Going out, could be. Um, there's a nut anyway under there. So if I put that's where the AC is feeding um, is feeding the diode there on that eyelet. Now if I look at the meter, I've got the other. I've got the other side of the meter, and I've got it set on on continuity. Watch what happens. When I press down on that board, it grounds out. Look at that. So that nut, the unbelievable. And if we look, hardly moving the board at all. And that is what's causing that fault. Um, there's been some slight maintenance by Mr. Lee Cross there. Um, yes, don't like the look of that, although, again, it's secure enough, obviously, but 
it's just bad workmanship. But anyway, aside from that, that's least of us problems. We need to find out now what we, how we can solve this problem. So now, we what we've done is we've got a massive piece of heat shrink, um, which is almost the width of that board. Folded it in half and put it underneath. You can't see it. Right, I've got all this amp recapped and things, um, but I'm afraid we've found a serious issue. So I've been biasing this amp up. Um, I think the last thing we looked at was um, sorting all this out here. Um, touching Mr. Lay Cross, so what we've done is we've I've put that into the eyelet, and there wasn't room for that cable as well. So what I've done is I've brought a piece of wire across there, bound it onto the um, bus and then soldered it up, tidied that up. But the problem is with the bias, so bias this amp up and um, I put a 150k resistor in there, should be 180k, so that's let a bit more bias through more negative volts um, and I have got about negative 44 on this now the problem is um, there's a 4 watt discrepancy between these two tubes and I've, I've tested a few uh, I've tested two sets of tubes in this reverse them and um, the uh, this is a set of uh, groove tubes that I've borrowed uh, from one of the other Selmers and We've got uh, 13, 13 watts on this one, and we've got 17 watts on this one. Um, I actually swapped them around, and I finished up with three and a half watts difference. But nonetheless, it's still um, it's still a considerable amount. There's also a when you turn the volumes down. There's also a, a slight unpleasant hum which again leads me to believe that there's something wrong with this um, something wrong with this output transformer because it's just impossible to buy it doesn't matter what tubes you put in it you can't because first off I thought those Marshall tubes have been mismatched badly mismatched but then putting another set of tubes in which obviously have been in another amp tells me that that's not the case um, so we need some more testing to find out, but I think there's a problem with that output transformer. I've, I've checked through the schematic and all the wiring's correct. Um, the only thing I don't like is this sing singular screen resistor here set out. So I'm, I think I'm going to remove that and put two separate screen resistors on. So that's really where we are with this amp, and I was uh, fired it up yesterday, and I was hoping to get this finished and so we could have a listen and have a demo but um, I'm afraid it's a bit sick so I'm afraid we can't so I'm going to wrap this one up so thanks for watching um, please subscribe to the channel if you wish to do so I really appreciate that and uh, you all take care and I'll see you in a future video so bye bye for now